As the prophet of esports, I rely on trustworthy and meaningful data every day. Data from our research partner, YouGov, offers the most complete view of esports fans and gamers in the world, providing context to who they are, what they think, the brands they buy, and things they do. YouGov's connected insights and research services inform strategy at every level. If you're a team, a brand, agency, or rights holder, you should be talking with YouGov. Their partners measure and maximize ROI and are telling compelling stories with data. Visit yougov.com slash gaming dash esports to learn more. Because this was big news uh, and, and a little bit scary news because I, I was worried when I see patent news like this. Sony has been actually in the news for a couple of patents in the last two weeks, right? We talked about one um, a week ago. Uh, and the headline here is Sony has patented an esports betting system. Uh, it looks like Sony is serious about breaking into esports after its purchase of Evo. And let me just read you the substance of the patent. Uh, basically, it covers the following Odds for various propositions concerning the play of a computer simulation are determined and presented to a viewer for pecuniary or non pecuniary wagering purposes. The odds may be determined using past game analytics or may be determined par paramutually. Um, the translation here is esports fans can bet on matches and at the same time uh, they can advertise to them and host a way to bet on the results, which I think everyone is sort of thinking about doing esports betting this way, right? Like you're watching and in real time you can place bets and it's all kind of in one screen. Um, you know, Jeff, I'm curious how you, like, is, is this, is, should, is this patent worrisome for the betting space? Is it something that, well, right? it's like not, it seems... I guess it's, it's not something we sort of know enough about. And it looks like the patent was filed, you know, a few years ago and now it's just come to light. So we don't know exactly what Sony has planned. I mean, it's the first time we've really seen either a publisher or a platform kind of get deeper into betting which I think is, is yeah, a little scary, but also exciting because it kind of shows, okay, they see this big opportunity. So I view that, you know, it's kind of like the, the TAM is there if they're kind of going after it. Yep. And it's also interesting that they did this right after acquiring Evo, like a tournament platform. So it, it kind of validates the model of, you know, owning the content, having the tournaments and, you know, the the gambling aspect of it. And the way it's, it's a little hazy and there were some words in that, description that i literally didn't know actually what they meant uh <laughs> sadly but um so it's not clear exactly what they're doing with this whether it's betting on professional matches whether it's peer-to-peer -peer. it sounds like they're going to analyze players past performance so maybe there will be an aspect of kind of you can bet on yourself or you can bet on you know me versus you paul or something like that i, I think it's interesting i think it's certainly where the industry is heading and you know we'll see what sony does to actually productize this if if anything, I mean, they're they're currently fighting, you know, a number of different battles with especially with the consoles just launching new game, you know, they're, they're battling a pretty fierce and emboldened competitor in Microsoft. So they have a lot going on. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they're looking to do uh, to get deeper within esports and, and betting. Certainly excited to see that. Lindsay, do you feel like this validates like the, Jeff mentioned this point, but I, I want to sort of press on it. Do you feel like this validates betting? as a primary way to monetize esports content, like esports proper, right? Competitive gaming. Right, it certainly helps. I do think that, and I hate to always compare to traditional sports, but I do think that the traditional sports industry is even moving towards this just because there's a lot more like Amazon's next gen stats, powered by the cloud, whatever. They, they're incorporating a lot more of that kind of stuff into their overlays as well, um, which to me suggests that they're probably, I mean, if Sony filed this patent a couple of years ago, then unsurprisingly, professional sports are still a little bit behind in uh, their creativity department when it comes to fan engagement. But I think it certainly helps solidify the idea that betting is a way of better engagement and a way to drive mon or to drive revenue and to monetize and all of that. This this definitely is a check in the wind column for uh, betting being part of the esports future. It makes a lot of sense, right? And, and, and mm -hmm. Jeff, again, you alluded to this, and Lindsay, I think you, you confirmed it. It's like, this idea of vertical integration just makes yeah. so much sense in, in I would argue, in sports and esports, right? Where you have 
we you have the the content itself right then you have the monetization and the extra information and data and ability to engage around the content right like and you have all this stuff under one roof seems to be the way at least the top players in the industry are all sort of organizing themselves right that mm -hmm. it's not it's not sort of disparate pieces that are all trying to work together it's it seems to be coming in under one roof and vertical integration seems to be the way to make all of this work. I don't know if you guys feel, is it too early to call that or is there enough evidence out there that this is, this is what's happening now in esports, right? Like you need content, you need tournaments, you need, you know, you need games, you need betting, you need all this stuff under one roof for, to really have a, an interesting business. I'm not entirely convinced that the you know the betting sponsor has to own the tournament, and certainly not that they have to own the game or the platform. Um, I think there's you know same way. I, I don't think again, like Lindsay said, I hate to use the tortured example of traditional sports, but I don't think DraftKings and FanDuel need to necessarily go out and own the NFL or you know. Fa put I, sorry, on their I didn't own mean tournaments. the game publisher. I meant like the actual game that's being played like yeah that, like, like a tournament like yeah. Yeah. But it's the same, the yeah. i guess it's the yeah. same yeah. analogy it's just esport i guess it doesn't always work one-to-one -one. like i think that there is a you know there is a robust enough ecosystem um and value chain where that there can be tournaments platform there can be sorry tournament um providers and there can be leagues that then sell the data to sports books or to sports book aggregators who sell the data to, to B2C consumer uh, sports books. And then it goes down the value chain that way. Like, I don't necessarily think that, you know, in this example, Sony needs to own the league, the yeah. sports book, the, you know, the actual platform. There's some value in specialization. Like, do I think Sony is going to go out and get, you know, a number of different sports betting licenses? Like that is a whole separate company that takes expertise takes uh regulatory know-how capital like that is not an easy process i mean look how hard it's been just for the minor players in the u.s i mean i know from our experience just getting one license in new jersey has taken some time and a ton of capital and a ton of management focus um you know is that sony really wants something sony really wants to do to get you know 40 states or however many states there's gonna be in the u.s and then a ton mm -hmm. of different jurisdictions over in Europe, plus Canada, Latin America. It, it's just, why, why go through that hassle? Because maybe they're looking at what's happening with their business, right? And and you have consoles that being are being sold at a loss, basically, right? You have maybe margins being squeezed as the cost of game development goes up, right? And, and you're looking, now they're all trying to create services, you know, like Game Pass and all these other things um, to, to, to generate revenue you don't think they will ever look at betting in-house as one of those potential paths? Given all the other forces at work. It's a pretty long-term play. I mean, they're going to have to spend a lot of money before really getting, you know, strong profitability in that space. And I think the console model is one that's pretty, pretty tried and true. Um, you know, even if everyone wanted to bury the console, like it's been, probably the last 15 years, everyone's talked about the death of the console, even as recently as a couple of years ago with, you know, the S word and, and the C word, uh, be, you know, cloud and stadia, uh, people <laughs> could go. Oh, hold on, Jeff, hold on, but... hold on. Google stadia <laughs> says they're alive and well. Okay. That's, that's, a, seg that's a segue right there. <laughs> no, that's the whole segment. That's the whole segment. Stadia yeah, says we're good even... <laughs> guys. We're not dead. <laughs> even despite that, um, the console launches have been phenomenal and that razor razor blade model works like you, to your point, they do sell the console at a loss, but they're making so much money on the services between PlayStation now in Xbox's case, Xbox live, Xbox game Boy. pass. Do they it, sell it at a loss? Yeah, they well, do. After the, According to Epic after, versus Apple, they, they confirmed say, that they do. They sort <laughs> so. of confirmed. It was very loose. 